Friends, the ISO 56020 defines innovation as a new or changed entity realizing or redistributing value. Simply put, innovation is implementation of an idea that results in new products or improvement of existing processes and services. Actually, the term innovation is bankrupt with everyone using it as they like. The little black book of innovation offers a simple five word definition. Something different that has impact. This week, let's see how India fares in the innovation index and what it must do to surge ahead of the other nations. Now, there are three common misconceptions according to the Harvard Business Review on innovation. The first mis misconception is that innovation and creativity are the same things. They will tell you to bring in a wide range of right-brained th thinkers, put them in a room and ask them Think of awesome ideas and innovation will happen. But the companies must not stop at idea generation. Now the same little book, you know, notes, innovation is a process that combines discovering an opportunity, blueprinting an idea to seize that opportunity and implementing that idea to achieve results. What it means is that if there is no impact, there is no innovation. The second misconception is that only a select group of people should drive a company's innovative activities. The truth is that everyone in the organization should think about doing something different that has an impact. The Wall Street Journal article noted that InnoSight founder Clayton Christiansen you know, favors three categories of innovation. Efficiency, which means doing the same thing faster or cheaper. Second is sustaining, which means making current solutions better and disruptive, transforming complicated solution to simple accessible and affordable ones. Now the third misconception. It is that innovation is all about big banks. No sir. Companies believe Apple as an aspirational standard and say they need to create multi-billion dollar platforms like the iPod, iPhone, iPad, etc. Pushing for big banks often leads to overly risky ideas that have little hope of getting approved in most of the companies. The scoreboard is measured not by the financial forecast, but by the impact it has. Now, whereas innovation seeks risk-taking and disruptive organizations that create revolutionary products or technologies, creating new markets, imitators, and they produce products that serve multiple local markets. The Global Innovation Index, GII, it's jointly developed by Cornell University and the Paris Bound Business School in Syria and the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, located in Geneva ranks 132 countries on 80 different indicators. The major categories for the index are business sophistication, market sophistication, infrastructure, human capital, and research institutions, create creative outputs, knowledge, and technology outputs. Now, they are the indicators. The India six notch jump to the 40th spot with a score of 36.6 the last year 
from 46th rank in the previous year is certainly commendable. The World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, like I said, reports that India is now the top most innovative lower middle income economy in the world, even overtaking Vietnam. Whereas Europe is the most innovative, Switzerland with a score of 64.6 leads the countries in the world for the 12th year in a row due to its high number of patents and institutional strength. The top 10 countries besides Switzerland this year are the US, Sweden, UK, Netherlands, South Korea, Singapore, Germany, Finland and Denmark in that order. Our neighbor, China, whom we use for several comparisons, improved its ranking from the 12th place in 2021 to 11th place this year with a score of 55.3. We have a lot of catching up to do. The employee creativity and innovation is essential for the success of any business, particularly in terms of economic turmoil. Engaged employees are more creative and more willing to accept innovative ideas from others. A company's culture can either foster or stifle innovation. Now, besides R&D spend, FDI, GDP, infrastructure, energy efficiency, per capita spend, quality of education and institutions, political stability, safety, ease of doing business, number of most valuable brands available in the country, patents filed and granted, labor productivity and digital transformation. They are all important for a better rank. In order to be an innovator and the country to evolve as an innovation hub, innovation culture must grow among its people and systems. Quality education is an important vehicle. Others must include high-tech manufacturing and high-tech net exports. Local talent must be encouraged who can create enterprise solutions to local problems. This will need high quality, homegrown companies in large numbers. Contemporary business education must lead. So our business schools have not kept pace with the leaders in the business, except a few of them. The admission to our business schools is still archaic, rule driven, mark driven and credit oriented and straight jacketed. Out of box thinking and mavericks must lead the way. Entrepreneurship is taught from old and dusty case studies such as Google and 3M that fail to develop the instincts needed for breakthrough innovation. The ability to explore is just linear and incremental. No game-changing technologies or processes evolve from such mundane thinking. Often, the gestation time is extremely large. Innovation seeks radical and aggressive thinking. Business thinking must move from research into ancient barter theory to digital economy and bitcoins. Minimum viable product and risk-based approach must be encouraged. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, information and security analytics, IoT, big data, project management, fintech, digital marketing and strategy must become part of the curriculum as audit courses or whatever. Currently, traditional business schools in the country inculcates short-term thinking. Students go through continuous short-term you know, testing in acquired skills, examinations, essays, and class participation. Instead, we must encourage imagination, we must encourage creativity, a can-do attitude, and innovative disruption. In Japan in 1917, a 23-year-old apprentice at the Osaka Electric Light Company with no formal education came up with an improved light socket. 
his boss wasn't interested so young matsushita started making samples in his basement he later expanded with battery powered bicycle lamps and other electronic products matsushita electric as it was known until 2008 when the company officially changed its name to panasonic is now worth 2.93 trillion dollars we need to identify such potential in our business schools to start with can we admit students who have nothing to do with grades but have a fire in the belly to excel steve wozniak and steve jobs must become the role models sir arthur charles clark and english science fiction right up once said the only way to discover the limits of the possible is to go beyond them into the impossible that kind of thinking leads to innovation friends we as people and our country can lead the world in innovation if only our industries research organizations and our educational institutions and our universities come together to work in collaboration and so on 5 trillion dollar economy too can then be realized with that i end today's episode thank you dhanyawad and namaskar till we meet the next saturday same time 1 pm thank you